from Anshay Svar Beth El Emeth Congregation. It's time to take 10 minutes for Torah with Rabbi Joel Finkelstein. Welcome to our discussion of how to affix the mezuzah and more. The question is, why is there a mezuzah? Why do you need a mezuzah on your door? Well, if you look in the Shema, this week's parsha, parsha Fred Hanan, you see that it says, You should place them on your doors and on the gates of your cities. And if you look at the context, the idea is that the, everywhere you go, there should be Torah. Whether you're whether you're in your house, you speak about the Torah. When you're on the road, you speak about the Torah. You're getting up, you're going down, you're rising, you're going to sleep. You, whether you are uh, whether it's your heart, your mind, all is absorbed in the Torah. And then on top of that, it's on your doorpost. It's everywhere. That's the idea. The idea of, of, of uh, mezuzah is that the Torah and God is everywhere. The Rambam writes at the end of the sixth chapter of Hilchot Mezuzah, he writes, a person should be very careful with this mitzvah because it's an obligation on everyone always. In other words, it's, it's one of these constant mitzvahs. It's on your door and it's always a mitzvah. Whenever you go in and you bump into it, you will, you will bump into the Yichud Hashem, the notion that there is one God, the notion that God is our God, the name of God. You'll remember the love of God. It's part of Yahavtad Hashem It's part of the beginning of that paragraph in which Mezuzah is found in chapter six, verse four of the, of, of Devarim where it says that you should love the Lord your God with all of your heart and all of your might. Part of that love is to be obsessed with God, no matter where we go, inside the house, outside the house, on your door, on your arm, on your head, wherever you go, you are, you're always encountering the Torah. You're surrounded by mitzvot. The, the rabbi said that, how can you sin if you have tefillin on your head and mezuzah on your door and, and tzitzis on your garment? You're always surrounded by angels, not in some mystical sort of sense, but the mitzvot themselves, they are, the angel says the Rambam, that are, that are surrounding you. You're always with mitzvot wherever you go. But in order to get this mitzvah of, of mezuzah, we also want to get it right. So first thing is you have to buy the right kind of mezuzah. So I have here a very beautiful, a very beautiful cloth that has all the right things. First of all, you'll notice the big ayin on the word Shema, the big dalet at the end of Echad, one, and that spells aid. We testify with this mezuzah to the presence of God. You'll also notice that there are little lines, and they're each, uh, each line, uh, on top of every letter, there is a scratch. The sofer, the scribe, scratches a line and he hangs all the words from that line. If there are no scratches like that, then you know something is a foul. You'll also notice that behind the words Hashem Elokeinu Hashem, on the one side, on the other side, it has these strange words, sort of gibberish words, actually various names of God, mystical names. You'll notice that around where it says Vayayim Shamoa, right there it says Shakai, is one of the names of God, is in the back of the mezuzah. Now, the Ramam told us not to put various names. This is not a kamea. This is not some good luck charm. We don't want to put names of gods and angels and all kinds of things in the mezuzah. The mezuzah is a mezuzah. It's got nothing else in it. However, on the back, we can put other things, and that's what we have. This particular one has a sticker. We want to remove the sticker. How do you put this mezuzah on the door? Now, some people think, well, you want to see the word, so you should put it exposed, but that's not the custom. The custom is to roll it. And we roll it from this side, roll it fr from the left, until in such a way that when you opened it, you would see the word Shema at the beginning. So you roll it. Now, you don't want to roll it too hard. You'll, you'll crack the letters. So first you roll it large in a large loop, large circle. Then you roll it a little smaller until finally it's ready to be placed inside the mezuzah. Now, we're worried a little bit about weathering and appropriate activities taking place near the mezuzah. So we want to cover it inside. In addition to the cover of the mezuzah cover, we want to also perhaps put cellophane. Some suggest it's better to have like a wax paper, breathe a little bit, 
take a, take a piece of wax paper a little bigger than this, and then wrap this inside, and then put the mezuzah inside that wax paper so it'll protect it. Then you, then you have to make sure that you don't have a forgery. Uh, here's a mezuzah, and there's nothing on the back. It's suspicious that something, it's, it's not the custom, there's something wrong. You start looking more carefully, and you see that it, it can rip. It's not parchment, it's made out of paper. Here's another one, it has all the right letters on the back. The letters are upside down, it's strange. And you start feeling it, it's a piece of cardboard. Sometimes you have very small mezuzahs, uh, that could be problematic because it's hard to write correctly when it's so small. We look and we say, where are the scratches? I don't see the scratch. The writing looks primitive. The letters of God are upside down. The names of God in the back, it's upside down. It's not the right way. And by the way, if you can't read Hebrew, you want to make sure your mezuzah is right side up and not upside down. You may want to get someone who knows how to read Hebrew in to help you. So we have to be careful. Forgeries, photocopies, it's not kosher. It has to be written by a scribe. As a matter of fact, it's written very, very punctiliously. And should the scribe make a mistake, he can't go back. It has to be in, written in order. And that's how, that's how exact it has to be. Letters can't touch each other. It's a very precise science. Now let's take a look at how to actually affix the door, and where to affix the mezuzah on the door. So as a person's walking into the house, you want the mezuzah to be on the right side. And notice that generally that would be on the same side as the hinge. Sometimes if you can't decide what side to put it on, the hinge could be a factor. Also, where you're walking in is a factor. You'll notice that the mezuzah is about one third of the way down. It's not all the way up. It's not midway. It's about a third of the way down. If you have a very tall doorway, some people just put it around shoulder length but some would put it actually just a third of the way down, even if it's very, very high. There is a custom to touch the mezuzah as you come in, and uh, some kiss it as well, to keep your consciousness about the mezuzah. You'll notice that the mezuzah is leaning 45 degree angle. Some opinions said that you should be flat. Some opinions said it should be straight up, and so as to make sure that it's not unkosher according to anyone, we have it at a 45 degree angle leaning in toward the house. As we go into the house, we move to the next doorway. Since I continue to walk this way, as I come from the outside door, I would tend to walk in this direction. So this continues to be on the right side. Notice it happens to be on the side of the hinge. Notice that there is, I have all the requisite pieces. I've got a mashkov, I've got a lintel, I've got a one mezuzah, one mezuzah actually means doorpost. I have another doorpost on this side as well. That's the type of doorway that requires a mezuzah. Had there been no doorpost on one side, if that side was the right side, I wouldn't have a mezuzah. If it was on the, if, if the left side, it had no post, but the right had a post, I would put it there. I could put the mezuzah here, but I want to put the mezuzah closer to the, the inside of the door, so I put it uh, inside in that direction. Again, I get the best angle I can. Sometimes I'm limited by the, uh, the, the doorpost itself. Sometimes you have to put the mezuzah inside the door rather than outside. It's not ideal, but it should, should be on the, on the door frame, not on the wall, if, especially if it's inside. I proceed into the next room in my house. And again, since I'm going to be entering in this way, I have a full archway. I've got, I've got the lintel, I've got two doorposts, and again, about one-third of the way down, I have a mezuzah leaning in and leaning forward. Now the question is, what sort of room requires a mezuzah? Well, it has to be in a room of some honor. You wouldn't want to put it on a door that's disgraceful. So, for instance, a room where it was a bathroom, shower room, you don't put a mezuzah because it's not an honorific place. What if the room is very small? What is it, you have a walk-in closet? Well, it depends. If the closet is about six feet by six feet, so a picture if you're a six-foot person like I am, and you lie down on the floor about six-four, 
and you can lie either way, that would be a room that's obligated. Of course, it has to be six foot four squared, so uh, sometimes the, long, the room is longer than it is narrow, than it is wide, and as long as the square footage would be six, six, six by four, six four times six four, that would be a room that's obligated. Garages, since you do use them, if they have a proper doorpost, would require them. However, an elevator or a car or even an airplane or a sukkah, since they're only temporary dwellings, you're there for a short time, even if somehow there was a doorpost, would not require a mezuzah. Men and women are equally obligated in this. And the, the bracha is as follows. You would put the, hold the mezuzah in your hand, make the bracha, and then place it, place it down and put the nail in. If you can't put nails, you can use two-sided tape, a thick, heavy tape, that kind of a thick, fun, fun, like a foam type of tape. As long as it's firm and it's, it's a fix, it's okay. Better to use nails. One thing you should not do is let it hang from a nail. It's on a nail, and then it swings. We, that's not considered honorific. We don't, we don't do it uh, in that sort of way. So that's Jewish law. On the one hand, it's about the love of God. It's about feeling connected to God wherever we go. Whenever we're coming, we're going. On the other hand, we want to get it right. The Torah commands to place these words on your doorpost. We want to make sure they have the right words. The words are written according to the laws of Moses and Israel by a scribe, proper margins, and it's, it's all done correctly. If we have a kosher mezuzah, we do it properly, put it in the proper place, we fulfill the mitzvah of God, and then hopefully this can be an expression of our love of God, how we care about Him wherever we go. And hopefully, Hashem Yishmort Zidcha Avoecha, Etav Olam, hopefully God will guard us in our comings and goings from now and forever. Thank you for joining us here at the Anshay Sfarad Beth Lameth Congregation for our discussion of mezuzah. Join us for other how-to videos, how to put on tefillin, how to put on a talis, how to get an aliyah, and our discussions of parashiot and holidays. Thanks to Jason Lefkowitz, our producer. Thank you. This has been 10 Minutes for Torah with Rabbi Joel Finkelstein. To learn more, visit asby.org.